Away with the Fay by Sven Pertelson. I've been away with the Fay for years. Some day, I hope, I'll find my way back to the real world. That is, unless they kill me first. The tales they tell to children make the land of the Fay sound wonderful and friendly. Well, it may be full of wonder, but certainly not friendly. I suppose that is the real difference between mythical fairies and the Fay. I'm not sure how the storytellers could have got it so wrong. I suppose that someone once met a good and gentle Fay. I've not met one yet. While back in the human world people come in a spectrum from the good to the bad, the Fay are either one or the other, no shades of grey. If a human psychologist could survive long enough to analyse a Fay, which I doubt, they would tell you they are sociopaths. They lie almost constantly. Other beings, even Fay, are just there to be used for their own gratification. I was lucky, I suppose, that the first of the Fay I met was what I call a dark Fay. I doubt I would have survived if I had met a bright Fay. At least with the dark Fay, their evil intent is almost instantly apparent. They hate everyone except themselves. Their delight is to humiliate and destroy, after making you suffer. The bright Fay, on the other hand, want you to be happy, and for them, the only happiness is being perfectly good, which may be possible for them, but we humans have flaws, and that makes them angry. I was still trying to work out what had happened to me, where I was, in what obviously a place so foreign to my normal existence. How I stumbled into the realm of the Fae I will tell you another time, but the immense scale of the trees and the vegetation, the glowing sky and the strange scents that drifted around me made me realise I was no longer in what you would call the normal world. I wandered for hours, looking for some sign of human presence, a road, a path, a felled tree, anything. It was then I felt a prickle run down my spine. I was being watched. I turned, putting my back against the rough bark of one of the huge trees of the forest. I wanted to face whatever it was. At first I could not see anything, or anyone. Then I glimpsed a movement between the trees. An unearthly figure stared at me. Tall, slender, with filmy wings folded at the back, and a face that looked both beautiful and fierce at the same time. Very obviously female, clad only in the lightest of garments, patterned like the leaves of the forest. But I took for a smile crossed her face, exposing a multitude of small, sharp teeth. At her waist a dagger, and a bow and a quiver slung across the shoulder. Almost as soon as I saw her, she was gone, just blended with the forest. Then she was there again, but closer. The Fay are hard to see if they don't want to be seen. In what seemed an instant we were face to face, and a sharp crystal dagger point was pressed against my throat. "'Your name,' she hissed. Her sharp-pointed tongue licked her dark lips. I'm not sure why I lied. I'm just glad that I did. She took a step back and gathered some moss from the forest floor, wrapped it with a few stems of grass and made a rough man-like shape from it. Then she whispered to the doll in her hands. I heard the name I'd given her as part of the incantation. When she bent the leg of the mannequin, I dropped to the floor, groaning. Not hurt, but I had worked out what she intended. As she played with the doll, I acted my part. Eventually, like a cat with a mouse, she tired of the game, and twisted the head off the doll. I lay still, eyes open and staring, and played dead. She did not give me a second glance as she unfolded her wings and flew up into the forest canopy. I lay there for a long time. It seemed the safest thing to do. After a few hours, I gathered up enough courage to move. This was a dangerous place. I needed to protect myself. 
I search my pockets, my pipe, matches, tobacco and my smoker's knife. The blade was not very sharp, but the bodger had a pointed end. It took me a while to break off a small sa straight sapling from the forest floor. The knife was just good enough to split the end of the stick, and I broke off the bodger and lashed it in place using the bark I'd stripped off the sapling. It was a small but serviceable spear. I felt slightly safer. That was a mistake. Over the next few days I wandered through the forest. I may have been walking in circles. Even where the canopy opened up enough to see the sky, all I could see was a uniform glow during the day, and constellations I did not recognise at night. All I could find to eat was fruit and mushrooms. I was careful, and only tried small amounts of each until I found until I could be sure they were not poisonous. That caused me much trouble, but I found that one yellow mushroom made me very sleepy. That one I would avoid in future. It must have been a week later that I met my first bright fay. To look at, there was no great visible difference, except this one was quite obviously male, and his clothes, what little he had of them, were blue. His behaviour was quite different, though. There was no attempt to creep up on me, and as he approached he sat on the forest floor and motioned me to sit as well. He introduced himself as Feather Ice Wind. Once again I lied about my name. That seemed a sensible thing to do. I was not going to get caught that way a second time. He told me he lived above the forest, where the glowing clouds met the sky. He travelled the world, bringing justice to the vulnerable. I explained that I was vulnerable, as I was lost far from home. He smiled. I could see the two rows of small, needle-like teeth as he did so, and he licked his lips as the other fay had done. As he stared into my eyes, I found I could not look away. He started asking questions about my life in the other world, and I felt compelled to answer. He delved into parts of my life that I don't discuss with anyone. He was always probing, and I started to feel worried. As I confessed more and more of my past misdeeds, I saw his wings starting to glow, and his face was looking even more fierce. He stopped me talking with a wave of his hand, and drew his crystal dagger. He told me, I was too wicked to be allowed to continue living in the land of the Fae. He couldn't send me back home, so I'd have to die. My hand was resting on my small spear laying on the ground. Not much of a weapon, but all I had. At least I would die fighting. It took all of my concentration to do it, but I managed to thrust the point of the spear forward into his leg. It was only two inches of thin steel spike. I hoped the pain might give me enough time to stand and run. I was totally unprepared for what happened next. It was as if I had touched him with a high-voltage wire. His back arched, his face contorted, and he threw himself backwards, screaming. His wings spread and beat the ground helplessly like a dying fly. The skin on his face and body turned red and started shrinking onto the skull and bones beneath. In a few moments he was still and dead. Then his body started to crumble like autumn leaves and the slight breeze spread him across the forest floor. I now know how to deal with both bright and dark fay. They are equally vulnerable to iron, what they call blood metal. They are a lot more reasonable when they know that I can kill them just as easily as they could kill me. And I am surviving. I am just longing for the day when I am no longer away with the fae.